श्री कृष्ण श्री कृष्ण श्री कृष्ण श्री कृष्ण गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात परम ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम तस्म श्री गुरव नम mind is an infinite potentiality because mind is an energy what we calculate 40 watts 1000 watts so many kilowatts this is the measurement of energy it is not energy like when we say 1 km 1 km is not a space 1 km is the measurement of space when we say 1 hour 1 hour is not time 1 hour is the measurement of time because <clears throat> the energy is infinite so this infinite energy it is tapped it is as if conditioned by the limitations of the five great elements in the outer world and pancha koshas in ourselves so when this infinite energy the mind is caught up in body identification it is resting in the mooladhar when the same mind the kundalini shakti is caught up in this body identification it leads to the desire formation and desire formation is like what like the whirlpools in the flowing river you must have seen during the monsoon days when the rivers are in spat there are two types of motions one motion is all the waters of the river are going in one direction that is a common movement of the waters there is a specific movement also of the water in the whirlpool what you call in hindi bhavra and the specificity or a speciality of this whirlpool movement of the water is it is having two movements simultaneously the mohara doesn't remain in one place it also moves along with the flow of the water and second thing it has got a centripetal force and because of the centripetal force if anything goes into that it is pulled down exactly the same way life is a constant flow when that constant flow is caught up in the whirlpool of body identification it is pulled down and when it is pulled down it tries to struggle to come out and the pulling down is nothing but an experience of incompleteness so to get out of this experience of incompleteness the struggle starts and the struggle is swadhisthan chakra where desires are multiplied and this swadhisthan thereafter as if becomes a star and whole life is spent only in fulfilling the desires and it can reach to an extent of greed in the manipur chakra so this infinite potentiality that the mind is is caught up in the lower three chakras and this is how samsar begins therefore the western psychology as well as jung they always talk about only the ill aspect of the mind not the positive aspect of the mind mind is infinite potentiality it is not only diseases it is not depression these are the anomalies 
therefore when a seeker has reason about these three chakras meaning when he has given up body identification when he is no more carrying the burden of desires and he is no more greedy so no greed contentment santoshat anuttama sukhalavah pant patanjali says if we practice contentment there is unparalleled bliss if we want to add even an iota the bliss becomes a blister it cannot so after one has reason about then one has come to the anahata chakra now here we start exploring not exploiting we start exploring the <coughs> invocation of the total dormant potentialities of the mind and this is achieved by working on the mind observing the mind educating the mind understanding the mind etc so in anah chakra now the mind is available for operation so the mind is now withdrawn it is no more disturbed it is something like when we do operation of a patient he is secured on the operation table then only operation can be done in the same manner the mind is now withdrawn from the three brought at the anah chakra now here the operation mind begins now here we are told that mind has these two aspects idam vrittis and aham vritti idam vritti is the not i thought or not i aspect of the thought and aham vritti is the i aspect of the thought after this is understood then we go further this aham vritti is feeding itself on the idam vrittis which are many in number and aham vritti is only one now this aham vritti when it is feeding on the idam vrittis it starts becoming fatter and fatter stronger and stronger healthy and healthy but this health is like you know the obesity it is not real health it has gathered so much of garbage so much of fat now when this is understood then we want to work on it so let us see where from the idam vrittis have entered the mind how they have entered where from they have come so we come to know whatever whatever we have given importance to that alone is idam vritti so if we have given importance to something we have to devalue that nobody can do it by proxy for us See? like you know we have given importance to our children son or daughter whatever and that child is uh, you know having some exam and therefore extremely tense and frustrated now the mother and the father they will be extremely tense and frustrated because my son my daughter is having this problem and when it is the same child but other people they are not parents they will not be disturbed now what is the reason situation is the same the situation is that the parents have given undue importance to the child and therefore the child's examination makes the patient tense not the children <coughs> once we understand this that whatever we have given importance to that alone disturbs us make it clear so what should be the working on the mind don't give importance to anything or anybody in this world take care of yourself uddare natmanatmanam natmanam avasadai atmayo atmano bandhu atmayo ripuratmanah we are in this world for our evolution 
See? How much we are disturbed because of our parents? Very little. And how much we are disturbed because of our useless children? Awfully. The reason is, parents we accept them as they are. Is it a wisdom? No. Majburi Karam Mahatma Gandhi. Where is the choice? We have no choice to accept parents or not. But when it comes to our children, we start imagining, my child should be like this, my child should be like this. The day we understand this principle, and this understanding is real spiritual practice. Not mechanically, getting up in the morning, go for a jogging and do something and then go to the temple, ring the bell and eat up to the nose and complain, I have a little more. That is not spiritual life. Hey friends. So if we are convinced of this principle that whatever we have given importance, that alone troubles us, then we start reducing the importance of the things in our life. First of all, reduce the requirements of life. More the choice we give, more miserable we are. Less choice you give, less miserable you are. Don't you give any choice to yourself, you are happiest. You see in our Kavila Dham, there are different types of people. Started from the class 4 or whatever they call it, laborers. And going to the top, the different grades. And see one beautiful part. These class 4 employees, they have got one uniform. So they don't have to think about, now what should I put on? One topic is gone. And as you go higher up, then I will just put on this jacket or that pant or that shoes. One hour you are standing in front of that dumb car with this, you know, uh, cupboard. See, it's a direct example. Give yourself a minimum choice. And giving minimum choice is have minimum requirements in life. Then, to that extent, the idam vrittis will be less virulent in our mind. Now, earlier, these idam vrittis were plentifully available and aham vritti was worrying on it, devouring on them, eating and eating. It is something like, you know, the typical Indians. Indians are those, when the marriage is there, they have to show off their riches. Borrowed riches, of course. And then there will be more than 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 dishes in the dining area. So many of them. Each plate will cost 1500 rupees, 2000 rupees. And then the people go, they don't go for marriage, they go for food. And when they go for food, so many things are available. Now these many things are kept so that you can choose what is suiting you. But we feel, you know, no, 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 they have prepared so much, how can we say? We take everything, everything, and it becomes so heavy. And thereafter, till the next marriage, the stomach is upset. We have to have the wisdom. How much we can, that much we should accept. Not beyond that. See, friends. And in this manner, <coughs> when the <coughs> idam vrutti's frequency is reduced in the mind, be attentive, to that extent, the aham vrutti will start becoming thinner and thinner. Because no more diet, no more eating unnecessarily. Now, go further, still less importance of idam vrutti's. This is called by Patanjali as Abhyasa Vairagya Abhyam Tandiroda. See, you will see these people talk about yoga, Abhyasa Vairagya Abhyam Tandiroda. What is Vairagya? Neither they practice nor they understand. See, friends. 
And when we give minimum importance to the worldly things and beings, then the mind remains at peace. Then nothing disturbs us. And as a result, this ahamrutti, because there is minimum thing to feed, starts becoming thinner and thinner. It takes time, but it happens. Now what will be the ultimate? We attend you. <coughs> ultimate will be when there are zero idamruttis, zero objective thoughts, meaning living at a zero complaint level. We all have complained only about others. See? Complain about others because we give importance to others. So when we live at a zero complaint level, idam vrittis are wiped out. Now, what will happen to daham vritti? Because there is nothing to feed. Then the vritti aspect of the aham vritti will evaporate. And vritti rahit aham. I, but the thought free I remains. And that thought free I is called as Vishuddha chakra. There is no Shuddhi means purity. Vishuddha means excessively pure. Means no trace of impurity. And what is the impurity? Impurity is the thought. See? When Patanjali says that <clears throat> Yoga ha chitta vritti nirodha, this is what he means. Impurity is the thoughts. So when the aham vritti is free from the vrittis, the aham remains. See? So, what is mind and what is going beyond the mind? Mind is when the influence of the vrittis or the thoughts is potent in our life. Then it is mind. And these thoughts can be controlled or suppressed. But that is not the solution. See, it is something like, you know, um, when people are born, they die. This, this happened in one case, somewhere in the uh, US. One young couple, <clears throat> they were debating on that. Uh, why should we have children and all that? So they came to me, Swamiji, see ultimately the children die, yes, then why should we produce them? I said, first of all you die, then we will think about the children. Is it a logic? Because somebody is going to die, therefore why produce? Because any we are going to go to toilet, don't take food, right? <laughs> Dumb, this is not the way. See friends. Therefore, the thoughts are not a problem. Please remember this. Therefore, in Vedanta, Chitta Vritti Niroda is not accepted as a good thing. Why should we be afraid of thoughts? See? It is something like, you know, when I keep my eyes open, I look at the things and I get attracted and I get lost. Therefore, you know, break the eyes. This is a dumb way of looking at it. See? Because I can hear, I keep on hearing the cinema songs, therefore I will destroy my ears. This is not the way. So, seeing by the eyes is an asset, it is not a liability. Hearing by the ears is an asset, it is not a liability. In the same manner, to have thoughts in the mind is not a liability, it is an asset. Don't be afraid of thoughts. See? It is something like this. <coughs> One person was driving the car. And I told her, I said, probably you are going wrong. No, Swamiji, I have been driving here for last 35 years. I know. 
said, all right. I said, I just said, because I failed, you are going wrong way. No, 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 no. All right. And then after half an hour, discovered, yes, it is wrong way. Because I was driving wrong, okay, I will not drive it. Is it a solution? Because of the wrong driving, you came to a wrong point. If you want to solve this problem, don't stop driving. Continue driving in the right way. See, in the same manner, because of the thoughts I am disturbed, therefore, Chittavurti Nirvata. How will you conduct yourself in this world? See, friends, therefore, Chittavurti Nirvata should be clearly understood. Thoughts, if they are, in uh, Amrita Vindu Upanishad, it comes, Mana eva manushanam karanam bandha mokshayoho bandhaya vishaya saktam nirvishayam smrutam. Muktam nirvishayam smrutam. <coughs> Mind when it is going downwards, dogwards, then it is a cause of bondage. When it is going godwards, it is a cause of liberation. So don't stop your thoughts under the force. Let the thoughts dissolve. See, friends, our, our meditation and understanding is like what? In some Marwari house, I was staying in Calcutta. And uh, they neither allow you to do anything, nor they do it properly. And I am very uh, fussy about clothes. Clothes should be properly washed, ironed, then there is a joy in putting it. Otherwise, you know, they call it simple living, high thinking. It is shabby living, stupid thinking. See? How you dress and how you address makes a lot of difference in life. So, they will not allow. No, no, our servants will do. And what the servants do, they also do not know. So, what they did, so this is the lungi. Now, this lungi, they fold. After this is folded, then this is how they should give to Swami Ji. Only the upper portion they will put and put the iron on there. <laughs> Swami Ji, with a you no know, plastic smile. And when I open that lungi, Vishwa Rupa Darshan, <laughs> all the wrinkles are as they are. This is our meditation. During meditation, cartoon. After meditation, <coughs> see friends, we cheat, deceive ourselves the most in life. To nobody we deceive, ourselves we deceive. See, therefore, <coughs> don't be afraid of thoughts. Then take this principle, bandhaya vishaya saktam. Then the mind is directed towards the worldly objects and worldly themes. Then the mind becomes the cause of bondage. And the same mind, <clears throat> when it is liberated from the importance, value, attachment given to the worldly objects and worldly themes, then the same mind is the cause for liberation. See? And what is the liberation? There is no liberation for I. Remember this. This is the basic difference between Vedanta and other uh, branches of science. See? There is no liberation for I. There is liberation from I. See? You know, where I saw one girl, she was staying with her parents before marriage and <clears throat> then she was so fed up with her father or whatever things at home. So she was just wanting to get married and get out of the house. So she wrote me, Swami, I just don't want to stay in this house even for one moment. Even if I get a donkey, I'll get married and get away. I am so fed up. So, I as a daughter is liberated. No, I as a wife 
मिजरेबल इज बॉर्न सी फ्रेंड्स I cannot have liberation. Liberation is from I. See, and this is the difference between Sankhya Yoga on one side, Vedanta on other side. According to Sankhya and the Yoga, there is one soul per body, like a one shoe per one soul per shoe, in the same manner. Therefore, I am liberated. You are not liberated. This is the height of ignorance. See, friends. therefore liberation is only from i and what is this i i is the one who is under the influence of the thoughts thoughts are no problem influence of the thoughts is a problem see then how one should live in this world if the thoughts are the creating bondage we should not have thoughts but if there are no thoughts we cannot conduct ourselves in life then what is to be done so find out which kind of thoughts are disturbing us or creating bondage so we are told the objective thought the bandhaya vishaya asaktam when the mind is too much involved attached influenced by the objective world then the mind become the cause of bondage and when the mind is freely moving in this world but not getting influenced by anything in this world see it is something like you drive the car freely but while driving protect yourself no 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 when you drive the car there are accidents therefore what you are done i have purchased a car i kept it in a garage and lock it <laughs> Then what you do? Every morning I get up, I clean the car nicely, take up uh, the uh, flannel cloth, and inside the cars, you know, uh, wheels from inside I clean it, absolutely clean. Then give the push pump, push panjali, close the garage, go to office by public transport. Come back in the evening. Again, I open my car, garage. Again, I do the puja. How dumb it will be! Exactly the same way. Keep the mind close. Outside you may close, inside volcanoes. Therefore, do not be carried away that the thoughts are problem. Thoughts are not problem. If you are influenced by the thoughts, then they are. traffic is not a problem if you have the ability to drive properly traffic is not a problem traffic becomes problem for those who are not capable of driving properly see then what they should do yoga yes get a proper license without paying black money but in india you get two types of licenses there was one uh, bihari driver in delhi it happened he was driving us and he jumped the red light or whatever police stop he stop kya hai that typical bihari arrogance you know kya hai license he took on left i started driving i said hey man what about your license baba ji don't worry i have got many license i distribute them <laughs> This can happen only in Bihar, nowhere else. <laughs> so, if the licenses are purchased like that, twelve to a dozen, then you will have problem. Therefore, we have to uh, focus attention on the quality of the mind. This passion is, if we have given value to somebody or something that disturbs us. if we have given value we have to devalue that that's it how simple it is and in this manner when we start living in this world for the uh, people looking around uh, looking at us from outside they will never be able to know the depth of our spiritual evolution 
for them, you know, oh, just like that, you know. That is why Bhagavan Shankara says, Yogarato va bhogarato va sangarato va sangavihina yasya brahmani ramati chittam. He whose mind is now no more reveling in the worldly objects, but now the mind is reveling in something higher in life. And something higher in life is freedom from desires. Now go backward. Objects become problem because we have given value to them. So we give, uh, devalue them. When we devalue them, to that extent desires will be less. When desires are less, mind will be quieter to that extent. And quite pure mind has one quality that mind will not go to sleep. Depressed people also don't have desire. They are sitting all the time in uh, Am Shama uh, Will you please get her from here? Okay. What happened? Realize. <laughs> it is depression. It is not a healthy condition. See? So when the mind is withdrawn from the world, it doesn't mean it is a depression. On the contrary, that mind is now potent. The complete potentiality is invoked. See? And that invocation of the potentiality is called as, now the mind kindles. Kastvam koham kutamayataha kame janani kome tataha. Now inquiry begins as to who am I? What is this world? Who is this God? And what is the real meaning of spiritual practice? See, now these are also thoughts. I want to have a new car. My car is very old. I should have that thing. These are also thoughts. But one thoughts are taking us towards the world and binding us. Other thoughts are keeping us in the world, yet the world is not influencing us. Otherwise, Jeevan Mukti would not have been possible. All the great masters lived in this world. They are not gone somewhere above the clouds. Therefore, when the mind is thus educated, then the mind starts contemplation. Kastvam koham kutamaya. And then we come to know, really, all the problems of our life begin from body identification. If there is no body identification, no desires. If there are no desires, there is no greed. If the body identification, desire and greed is not there, there is no frustration, there is no depression, there is no expectation, there is no samsar. Now the mind is free to operate on that mind. Then we start inquiry as to who is this I? So am I one inside or am I a crowd? So we come to know, I is a crowd inside. Husband, wife, brother, father, mother, sister, mother-in-law, daughter-in-law, teacher, student, friend, enemy, rich, poor. How many of them inside? Not one. Now out of that crowd, who is me? That inquiry will make one very uncomfortable then nothing in this world can really bother us, see? When the identity crisis really takes possession of us, then our intensity of inquiry becomes deep. It is something like this, you know. There was one boy, he was adopted by somebody. And when that boy was grown up, Anyway, whatever you may try to hide, but the person comes to know, they are not my real parents, I am adopted. So his only inquiry was, who are my parents? Who am I? Up to the age of 35, I saw him. 
He was only doing that job. This happened in U.S. Only this. Collecting the information, going here, going there, all that. And finally, when he came to know that his uh, mother was a prostitute in Calgary in Canada and the father was somewhere unknown and then when he went and saw and met her, he said, she said, yes, that is all true. You are my son. But you go now with the, whosoever is bringing you up. I have no connection with you. So 35 years of his life, he has spent to find out what is my origin. See, exactly the same way. All life is spent to find out who is this I? Can I be the body which is not created by me nor the body listens to me and yet I consider myself to be body? Then am I embodied? The bodies come and go. Embodied continues to be. So who is this embodied? In this manner the inquiry begins. <coughs> and when this inquiry begins, then mind is no more an issue for us. For us, mind is a big issue. Mind is agitated, one extreme. Mind is depressed, another extreme. Mind is never balanced. That is what Bhagavad Gita emphasizes. Yoga means samatvam yoga uchyate. The mind has to be equanimous under all conditions. See? Our mind is not equanimous because of this attachment. If it is my relation, then he or she is the best. If somebody is best but not my relation, but we don't need him. Balance gone. And wherever the balance is lost, the joy of life goes away. Because ashantasya kutasukham. He who is ashanta, he who is not equanimous. Shanti doesn't mean keeping mum and dumb. Shanti means we are no more ashamed of our own being. That is the pure Shanti. See friends, Therefore, mind is a problem when it is vishaya saktam, when it is running in the objective world. And the same mind is a great asset when the mind is engaged in inquiry into the truth. And the inquiry has a uh, few fields. First field is about oneself as to who am I. So, am I the Annamaya Kosh, when I say I am old, here the meaning of I is body. When I say I am hungry, you are taking the class too late, the breakfast will be over, we hope they will keep the breakfast in the dining hall or they will put a board there, you know, late comers, nothing available. And listening to Vedanta. Don't worry, I have told him. Ah, thank you. <laughs> See? So, I am hungry, I am thirsty. So, am I prana? I am happy, I am miserable. Am I mind? I am a self-made man. Am I intellect? I am to Baba, happy go lucky. Am I the Ananda Vaya Kosh? Who am I? After born as I am body, thereafter the second generation 2G is born. Then is born the I am mother, father, brother, sister, blah, 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 blah. Then who are miserable? These fellows who are nowhere, they are miserable. Our condition is like, we go, to, we, as if we have got less problem of our own life. We want to see those useless uh, serials in the TV. See, these things, you know, I always learn from these experiments. 
when you go to somebody during that time where their favorite serial is going on then watch not the serial their face <laughs> how are you sahaji <laughs> <laughs> this is how we are cheating ourselves and then from those funny funny characters we go on imagining yes my mother in law is also exactly like that i should do the same thing what this daughter in law now that serial comes out of the tv and starts acting in the house hey don't get involved in this world unnecessarily find out as to who is this i and when who am i this inquiry is kindled that clearly means we have accepted ourselves to be someone other than the body as the body i have no question as the body i know i am man i am woman i am young i am old i am mother i am father what is the problem the real problem comes when we even theoretically accept that the embodied is different from the body and the embodied is living the life see like you know the eyes are not seeing through the eyes somebody is seeing in the same manner your ears are not hearing through the ear somebody is hearing so that somebody is embodied living in the body and not the body even if we theoretically accept then we start working on that so the embodied is other than the body what is the load of this statement what exactly it means the household the man is different from the house now what is the meaning of that if the house is made up of cement then man is not made up of cement okay if the house uh, ceiling is uh, 12 feet tall the man is not 12 feet he is only 2 feet tall okay if the house is square he is not square he is round see now apply this principle if the embodied is other than the body this is what is called as working on the mind now the mind is no more going toward the worldly thing but now the mind is working on this issues who is this embodied this intense longing to know who is this embodied is called as contemplation See? it is something like you know chitta vritti nirodaha when we are satisfied with that it is something like what there is a pain because of the eye so what we do we give a pain killer pen killer is not a medicine that can cure you pen killer is a medicine to kill you without pain see in the same manner thoughts are creating disturbances okay no thoughts <coughs> and you can't do it never mind i'll take drinks drugs and when drinks and drugs are taken then the divine experience begins without sadhana shambhavi mudra some buffalo comes and hits and goes as has to because no strength to do anything or even run away that is not spiritual life so the thoughts are no more a problem we discard the objective thoughts and now initiate the inquiry and then we come to know that there are three types of eyes the real eye the illusory eye and the secondary eye 
This is all happening in the mind. Mind it. So the <clears throat> real I is the one which we are all seeking. It is common. Bhagavan says in Gita, Kshetradyam Japimam Vidhi Sarva Kshetreshu Bharata. Arjun, I am alone expressing in and through totality. Like electricity says, I am alone expressing through all the bulbs in the world. Will you call it as an ego or arrogance? No, it's a fact. In the same manner, I alone is expressing through all the real, all the world. This is the real I. And this I doesn't have a plural. Because this I includes the first person, second person, third person all together. Therefore it is Ekameva Dutiya, one without a second. So this I is the real one. Then the illusory I is born the moment there is identification with the body. Mithya Atma, Mithya Atma, illusory I is born. And after the illusory I, the Mithya Atma is born, then the secondary, second generation, the Gaunatma, the secondary Atmas are born and they are all relations and all possessions. I am rich, I am poor, I am healthy, I am unhealthy, I am husband, I am wife. These are all the secondary Atmas. And the secondary Atmas are born after the Mithya Atma, the illusory I is born. And when illusory I is not real, how can the secondary I be real? See? And once this clicks by God's grace, thereafter you are with everybody but you are with nobody. You are everywhere yet you are nowhere. You have everything yet you have nothing. That joy of non-possessive experience, that joy of non-relational existence is the ultimate bliss. See friends. Therefore, in Anaha Chakra we have got two options. Either go dogwards in the lower three chakras or man and go upwards. Find out who is this mind which is troubling me. Then we come to know this mind alone has these two aspects. Whatever we have given importance, that alone bothers me. We give zero importance to everything in this world, you are at peace. The other day in, Hedra, in uh, Haridwar, one Mahatma Ji asked me this question. Ramiji, uh, I'll ask you one thing. Yes. You should have your own place sometime, somewhere. You must get settled in life. <laughs> I said, I am settled in my heart. Those people who are settled in their houses, find out whether they are settled or unsettled. Settlement is not in a house. It is not in a place. You must be settled in your own heart. See, if settlement in the house is real settlement, then all the householders should have been happy. But they are all miserable without exception. You have to settle in your own heart. See, friends. Therefore, you have to be at peace with yourself. Then I told him, see, this ashram, who is this? Swamiji, of course, this is your ashram. Then why should I have a second ashram? <laughs> say, you are taking care of my ashram. Think, they go. <laughs> Friend, this is such a joy when you have nothing, you have got everything. See, the other day, say, somewhere I was taking food. And that lady asked me, Swamiji, uh, do you take uh, food outside? I said, why? No, because you have gone to hotel also and you go to everybody's house. Therefore, 
I said, Mama, I got certain rules in my life. Lord, I take food only outside. Normally, Baba Ji has been 101 rules and regulations, and I am abnormal. So, my rule is, I take food only outside. Why? I said, because I have no house. You may think that you are taking food in your house, but your house is outside for me. <laughs> See? If you have your house, then the other world is outside. If you know that everything is your, Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam. See friends, this burden of possessiveness is only an illusion that we carry in our mind. See? I was in Singapore and one of my friends asked me this. Samaji, suppose you become the chief of Indian politics, whatever is there, president or prime minister, what will you like to do first thing? I said, I like to do one thing. Inheritance of property will be scrapped. There should not be inheritance of anything from the parent generation to the next generation. Why? I say, because of that people start accumulating. When they know whatever they may earn, the moment they die, it becomes government property. See? All corruption will come to an end. But here, we keep on accumulating to such an extent that next ten generations should get their food. See, friends, therefore, if we really mean spiritual life, we have to stop this possessiveness, accumulation, relations. This is one thing, you know, the other day when I was observing, you know, this Narendra Modi Ji's uh, oath ceremony. So, one person, a Gujarati, in the, that time I was in South Africa. He said, Amini, uh, see now Narendra Modi's all relations will be there. I said, no, it will not be there. He said, how do you know? I said, I know that man very well. Nobody will be there for his ceremony. He will tell, watch on the TV, no need. And exactly that is what has happened. If you want to really do good to the world, keep all the relations away. If you want to run your business properly, don't involve any relation in your business. You cannot do anything. See, in US, one of my friends, he has got a very big business and he asked me this question. Samiji, I don't know, I am having a lot of problems. Can you suggest something? I said, I know the problems. Why? Your relations. You have put all your, in the mama, bacha, useless fellows in their business. They don't work and you have no choice. You can't even fire them off because they are the brothers of your own wife. What will you do? If you want to run a business, be perfect businessman. Kick away everything. Get the work done. See how the business runs. The same thing happens in our life. If possessions and relations, they are overpowering us, mind becomes a problem. If possessions and relations do not overpower, you are free. See? How important it is. But you will see all around the world, take any political party. It is only the um, dynasty rule in every party. See friends, if we really mean spiritual life, we have to swallow this. It will appear as bitter, but this is the truth. But if we are making spirituality as a business, like most of the Swamis like me do, <laughs> then it is okay. Make spirituality as a business, construct ashrams, collect money, this is how the mind becomes a bondage cage and we suffer. So now we decide ourselves. 
that no more we will be victimized by the mind. Mind wants this thing that it shut up. Try these two techniques. This is the Maha Mantra. Learn to say no. No favor. Don't take favor from anybody. Learn to say no. And have the courage to say no. Then only we can protect us from ourselves. Otherwise, you know, like you start taking food and you know how many, I prepared for you, oh, 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 Recently, where I was, there are about six, seven of them, Gujaratis only. Ah, huh, Pune. I was having my lecture, somebody's house I went. And about seven, eight of them was. You can imagine Gujarati was giving food, what a calamity it is. <laughs> Everybody will bring and take this, take this, take this. I said, Mama, look here, I take with my own hand, because I don't take if somebody gives me. That's my rule. Keep everything here. And they have kept so many things as if I am a buffalo. And then everybody waiting. Now, when I say, my dish, my dish, my dish. I said, now you all go in that room and start chanting Hanuman Chalisa. <laughs> For what? For my protection. <laughs> from, from you all. <laughs> then there will be a little bit whatever I have to eat, I have taken and finished my food. Ah, now you can come. Somebody, have you tested? Is he whatever you have prepared? Very good. <laughs> See, friends, we have to have that courage to say no and also listen no in life. Those who cannot listen no in life, they become depressed, frustrated. They are weaklings, they are not strong people. See, this is the way to go beyond the mind. If the mind is engaged in something higher pursuit. And what is the higher pursuit? How we can go beyond the mind? And who is the one who is beyond the mind? Is it the soul, the ego, the God? Who is that? That will be dealt with in the next episode. Om Purnamadaha Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sri Guru Bhyonamaha Hari Om Thank mm-hmm. you.